Welcome to Pep Talks, and I am your, not your host, Eddie Pepitone. Eddie is on his way to San Diego today. It's me, Stephen Lolly. Don't don't tune out, okay? Don't panic. It's going to be a great show because we have a couple amazing guests here today, who I'm going to share with you. You you fucking cowards out there. You weaselly cowards. You centrist fucks. You 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 are in for a treat today because we have today uh, an amazing guy. First of all, we have two amazing comedy folks. Um, the first guy is the proprietor of uh, probably the the only comedy, real comedy underground in Hollywood. There's never really been a comedy underground in Hollywood since I've lived here, 15, 16, 17 years. There have been little little like one, one-nighters, once a week kind of places, but there hasn't been a real week-long comedy club underground. And this guy is the proprietor of, and keeping this alive for the past couple of years, coming on two years anniversary now of the Comedy Dojo. Please say hello to Trevor Kevelo. That's me. Hey, Trevor. Hello. Yes, Trevor Kevolo. In so, the flesh. How you doing, man? I am really good, man. I'm really good. I'm not going to lie. I'm doing well. Was that a good intro for you? That was exciting, yeah. Yeah. yeah I haven't gotten one of you those You didn't think about it like that, did you? <laughs> no. Yeah. It's usually, and then there's this guy. Yeah. Give her a round of applause for him. Hurry up. Give him his seven minutes and get him out of here. Okay, so on that note, <laughs> our other guest. Our I thought other, it was very impressive. Trevor. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, <laughs> man. Uh our other guest is fucking this guy is an OG. I call him the OG because he has really lived the dream. Uh, talented guy who has just been in so much shit. I actually made a list of this guy's credts, and I had to leave off about seventy things. Thank and God, I that's a just small piece of went paper. through. <laughs> I just, I mean, it's very, very. <laughs> <laughs> what is that a post-it it's yeah. very small print this is not well wait wait till you see how i read this off okay, okay first of all he's made appearances on shameless he's been in curb your enthusiasm right yeah i read this off of imdb that's Kyle. true so, yeah yeah it's true uh he was bizarro george on seinfeld mm, that was bizarre that's new awesome. news radio He's been on Murphy Brown. He's been on Who's the Boss. He's been in the Golden Girls. He's been in the fucking Jeffersons. He was in and had a supporting role in When Harry Met Sally. Mm. He had a significant role in Runaway Train with Eric Roberts and John Voight. He was in The Woman in Red with Gene Wilder. Holy cow. And he was in Flashdance. This guy is probably the only to Rick Overton, the second most credited comic actor we've ever had on since I've been here on this podcast, please say hello to Kyle T. Hefner. Oh, hello. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a nice list. I, I should read that every day. You should. I'm gonna going to give this. Wow, I've done a lot of shit, I guess. <laughs> You're so, so humble for a guy who's done so much shit. So how you doing, man? I'm doing great, Stephen. I'm doing really good. You know, out there driving around in the smoke traffic, it's just fantastic. You know, I got a mask in the car and air filtration going, you know, so, you know, and water, lots of water. You've and, lived in L.A. for how long, would you say? I, would I say? I, I know exactly. I've lived in Los Angeles. <laughs> hey, before you were born, you were a little speck. Probably. No, uh, 40 years. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't tell anyone. Have the fire? Have the fires gotten worse? Since yes. We, yes. There used to just be like a shrub that would burn. You know, <laughs> like a, a burning bush. bush. Yeah, like Old be Testament a burning style. Bush. <laughs> and it was contained. Yeah, it was a burning bush. And you know, and I don't mean you know, a redhead. But anyway, <laughs> I that's I shouldn't say that. But anyway, I I yes, there used to be just like a little odd fire like on the side of the freeway. You know, where some ice plant dried up. And then that was it. But now we have major conflagrations. Yeah. Yeah. And so when did this really start escalating? Would you see in your 40 year, in your 40 year wander in the desert, sir? I would say year 32 and a half. That's when <laughs> I think it was June. Wow. <laughs> this guy has it was a June. 1984. June? Are you sure it was June? It was <laughs> June. 28. Uh, yeah. All oh. kinds of Old Testament type of yeah. references here. <laughs> As long as it wasn't July. Oh, no. Ooh. Does anybody ever make that joke, July? Uh, no. Not I, out here. Not out here, no. Really, no. Yeah. I thought of that. I th- not I'd in like polite think company. I thought of that joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, so these two badass motherfuckers are, were so good to, uh, to come on today and join me because it's a really a nightmare being alone and talking 
and know, as we discussed about about, about about you do, <laughs> yeah, Trevor's Trevor's the one broke guy who lives in the Hollywood Hills, who uh, you are really near the fires. I'm I'm in Bel Air. I'm not. Yeah, I'm. Oh, too, yeah. not wow. to brag. To be to be correct. Wow, I'm do you Bel-Air. even get DoorDash up there? I no, mean, you don't. Okay. No. <laughs> My neighbor owns DoorDash. Oh, <laughs> oh man. So that's what's burning down. Yeah. 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 Exactly. By the way, Rick Overton came on this podcast with me. The first time I ever did the podcast alone, I had Rick o- without Eddie. Yes. And Rick Overton was my first guest, and he did an impression of your laugh. Oh, God. So you'll have to go on. <laughs> that's great. You, you may not want to watch. I mean, I think it's hysterical. And he mentioned that you had done a movie together, and it was uh, one of your first movies, right? Yeah, Young Doctors in Love. That's such yes. a terrible title. Oh, oh Young God. Doctors in Love. It was a soap opera parody. Okay, so. okay. Huh. And it had a lot of soap opera people in it, so. Cool. I'll look that up. Yeah. So you're burning down. I, I'm actually, I'm two miles east of it, almost to the dot. I'm, I'm right past, uh, right east of the 405, so I'm close to it. Uh, we haven't been evacuated, thank God. But it's, uh, was it two days ago? The I'm up on Beverly Glen, and the traffic coming down Beverly, Beverly Glen from Mulholland was awful. It was real bad. It was so bad that I, I used the Uber Lyft that the Uber Lyft went all the way up the hill and all the way around. Because well, they did shut down, down the 405, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they, they did shut down. So, um, yeah, but I mean, but so you're far, safe. so good. You're We're safe, safe. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Can you give us an update, people in YouTube land? Can can you give us an update on the fires right now, or is it contained? Is it? I think it's contained now. the The last I saw is that there's there's fires in Simi Valley and Thousand Oaks, so it's. It, I don't think it's spread. It just all of a sudden there's fires up there now. And now now which here is bizarre. It's, there's the fires just popping up. Yeah. I think they evacuated the Reagan Library. Yeah, that's yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, that's right. Um, I heard that on the news on the way here on the radio. That should have been AM. evacuated many years ago. <laughs> You, that was a great setup, by the way. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. That's the laugh. Uh, so, okay, so all I know is I was out in the other day, and the smoke, you could smell it in the air. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then the next day, you couldn't smell it in the air. Yep. So that's how I determine how bad the fire is. Yeah. I don't turn on cable news. I don't read. I, I go on social media, which is a, enough of a panic box. Yeah. But this, the cable news thing, you know, I had two or three people in the morning wake me up with, are you okay, in my email and my text out of town, and I didn't even know there were fires. I had no uh, idea there were even fires going on, and they yeah. woke me up with these, are you okay? You know, so Did you begin I, to question whether you really were okay? Well, because I'm an egomaniac, I questioned <laughs> them first. <laughs> and it, are, are you, I said, are you okay, are you, yeah. mom? Yeah. <laughs> because anytime it rains in LA, my mother calls me or texts me and uh, asks me if I'm okay. So yes, I have to ask preserver. her first, are you okay? Are you? You're suburban neurotic. And then, yeah. then I had to rescind it and email everybody and go, you're right. I am okay, but I'm sorry I questioned you. And I'm actually thank more you for, than okay. Thank you. I'm more than okay. Out. Thank you for checking on me. I'm an asshole. Out of uh, out of all the people I interact with on social media, especially Facebook, I'm legitimately, other than my housemate, the only person that's near the fires. And I've seen probably 50 to 100 check-ins. Marks, of, and I'm yeah. one of them. Right. I'm and, Mid Wilshire, and I'm marking safe. Because I have people yeah. fucking bothering I've, me. I've had two people call me, my mother and my father. And that's it. Nobody else back in Chicago has called me. What about you, OG? Does well, anybody bother you? Well, anymore? no. I think what happened was somebody said from Chicago, I think someone I went to high school with, sent me a thing that said, are you okay? Like a thing, like a pop-up thing. And then I a messenger. It, yes. Yeah. But then I think what happens, then that goes out yes. to all. You know what's fucked up? Is more people see that than my comedy posts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 70,000 yeah. people were like engaged in my well being, but when it comes to my prosperity, fuck yourself. Yeah. You can go fuck yourself. We just want to know you're okay and yeah. miserable. Yeah. yeah. But not that you're yep. advancing in the world. No, exactly. I meant my career was on fire. Yeah. Not oh. that. <laughs> direct, re- direct reflection of everything out here. Those fires. So here's a wild thing. Trevor and Kyle and I are all from Chicago. 
Yep. And this is going to get really fucking crazy. Okay. Uh -oh. Last week, we were all in Chicago together. And oh! these two guys don't know that. And we all banged and the same chick. when I see he had to make a fucking joke out of something that it was going to have <laughs> mystical meaning. And Trevor She's took it right. Nightmares. Trevor took it right to the south side. <laughs> yeah. He took it straight to Comiskey. <laughs> right there. Oh, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were booked to be the guest, so we were already going to do this. But when Eddie dropped out, I was at the airport, and I immediately thought of you. Because when I got to Chicago, I went on Facebook, and your post was right next to your post. Uh, huh. Kismet. Yeah. <laughs> where, where was everybody? That's fucking wild. Well, I was in Chicago Heights. Southside. You weren't Northwestern. I was mainly at, in Evanston, but okay. I was on the north side. Okay. okay. But I drove around the south side just to check. You did? Yeah. Jeez. Shit. If I wouldn't, I should have checked in with you. <laughs> did you have your Bible the whole time? I did. It's I did rough. have my Bible. Yes. <laughs> and you? West side. West suburbs. Yeah. Uh, not what suburbs? Uh, He's from Naperville. Naperville, Lyle, Oh, Hollenberg. beautiful. Yeah. I remember when there was corn out there. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. I remember there was a dairy farm up until the 90s. There was a wow. dairy farm in Naperville until the 90s. See, you motherfuckers. See? Where do you go and get to hear stuff like this? <laughs> the culture of Chicago there and the a... Southland and the, the Chicagoland area. Trevor, yeah. did you grow up on cheese curds? Do you like a good cheese curd? I love cheese curds. Oh, are they good? Oh, I die for Culver's. Deep fried cheese curds? Oh, I mean, getting... come on. Ooh, How getting, about Aurelio's I'm Pizza? That's where we were. Boner. That's where we went. Aurelio's yep. Pizza. Rosati's, Aurelio's. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, if it was Italian. Giordano's. Yes. I had some Giordano's. Yeah. Yes. Can't I had a um, Lou Malnati's. Lou, which yeah. is the best. Is, yeah. yeah. I had yeah. one of those. My actually, my mom, she's from the south side, and our pizza of choice for the longest time was actually the, the thin, thin cut, uh, or thing like the thin crust yes. square cut, the tavern style. R right. Yes. Yeah, that's really Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we preferred because my, my parents weren't big fans of deep dish. It was just right. too much for them. So it was always the big, huge, like... Sicilian. You know, exactly. You know, thin crust, square cut, party cut, whatever. Those are delicious. I had one I somewhere, them. but it was heavily seasoned with fennel. But it was huh? delicious. Well, fennel? <laughs> fentanyl? <laughs> I don't want to talk about fentanyl right now, okay? <laughs> I felt a little weird afterwards, but it was tasty. I have a horrible joke about fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> you you reclaimed that. Yeah. You you did that with fentanyl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, the. It's it's so popular. They're putting it in pizza now. Yes, and it only takes yeah. a little bit to season it. Just yeah. like a, clearly a micro dot. So after you ate that, was that what gave you this Scottish look that you have today? Is that yes. Was it the fennel? <laughs> yeah, it was. Cause, yeah, cause either you, that or the scotch. You're ready. <laughs> You look like you're ready to, to fucking to. I don't even know what. I don't know what I'm ready for. <laughs> yeah. But a goal. <laughs> He's ready for another drink. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pep talks. Where can you get this kind of great? I mean, there's no Eddie Pepitone today, but he will be calling in. But uh, what a beautiful thing to have you two here and to have been in Chicago at the same time. Yeah, it's strange. That's and you went very to strange. you went to Bloom High School. <clears throat> well, I for a minute. moved to Florida. Before that really got underway. Okay. But because uh, I moved when we were, you know, I graduated high school and college. I didn't graduate college, to be to be clear. But I did end up graduating high school and going to college in Florida. Uh. So, and then I started my comedy career there, if you want to call that a career. It really yeah. wasn't a series of open mics. Uh, <laughs> and uh, What town was that in Florida? Uh, there were two. There was Orlando, Florida, mm -hmm. oh. which is where I was for college. Oh, Oof. man. Vegas for children, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and then there was Tampa, Florida, where I went to high, you know graduated high school. So really, the place where the imagination goes to die. Yeah, <laughs> really, where the only culture is the bacteria in the water. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, God's a little waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's south. Waiting? I think oh, that's okay. the south, but it's all really yeah. just yeah. Boca. Yeah, uh. that it's all swamp. <clears throat> mm. Jews are not meant to be in swamp, by the way. We're we're oh. we're desert people. Uh. Did you ever go on one of those airboats? You know, those no. boats with the Yeah, big a fan? pontoon boat. Is that what you mean? A pontoon? No, they're no. like yeah. they're flat and they have a big fan yeah, on the, the back. Yeah, the big fan boats. I never was on yeah. one they of those. They look so cool. Have you gone on one of those? No, no, but there was a TV show when I was a kid called The Everglades and the hero rode around. He was like the sheriff of the Everglades or something <laughs> and he rode on one of those cool boats and chased alligators and criminals. Man. Have you rode on a I have never. 
I don't make it out to Florida much. Hover boat. Hover You're not missing anything. Yeah. And I, I, I really held it against my parents for years for yeah. bringing us there. I was upset that, <laughs> that we had to be. And, of course, they were happy because they were getting away from cold weather. Yeah, mm. of Which course. is what every new northerner fantasizes about, not yep. having to. So, but, you know, it was just uh, rednecks and Puerto Ricans. Mm. And the Puerto Ricans were all right. <laughs> but the rednecks, the, the rednecks were just, I don't know. It's being a big city person and then going down to the sticks is not cool. Mm. It's not cool. Yeah. Although we got to see the Bears at because they were in the same division. Oh, that's right. Oh. As oh. For, oh. Still in the, so for Central when we had a yeah Central before division. the yeah. realignment. Yeah, and then when they realigned, I moved. So I got to go to see Bear games at Tampa Bay Stadium. Oh, that's cool. I yeah. remember going with my dad to Soldiers Field and. It would be like 30 degrees below zero. And <laughs> I, I, you know, he'd bring a thermos for me, which had like chicken bouillon in it or something that was hot. And he had a magic thermos. He was feeling no pain yep. whatsoever. <laughs> He's like, wow, you feeling all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay with the bouillon. What's in your thermos? <laughs> You feel you look really warm. How old yeah. were you? How old were you? I was uh, about six, I think. I... <laughs> yeah, his thermos That's wouldn't awesome. have been right for you. Yeah. There. No, quite no, at that I didn't age. get the magic thermos. Yeah, no, no, you were proud twenty years. Yeah, too soon. How about you, Soldier Field? Uh, Soldier I was there. Field I've only or... been there twice in my life, and it was both. They were both preseason games. I've never never been there for a regular season game. Uh, first time, I was like, uh, man. I think I was in eighth grade, mm. and I went with my best friend and his cousin. We saw we, they played the Vikings, froze our asses off. And then a couple years later, I went with my dad. It was a preseason game, and that's uh, they played the Cowboys. So was that fun? Yeah, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Of course, we were late with my dad, and he was just screaming the whole way there. And we got there, and he was happy for about a half hour. <laughs> Parking was always so easy. Yeah, <laughs> my my dad my dad's had a he's got a bad leg, so it was like always a bitch for him to stand and stuff. So we'd sit down and just scream and swear, but then he would be happy about thirty seconds later. I think the weather was beautiful last week. I mean, I loved forty fifty. Uh, it was like refreshing. It it's was the rain though. Is where I just I can't take it. Really? Yeah. There was in the, in Naperville. There was there was some like some just weird overcast a little bit of rain it was just it bugs me i don't know that's it's just depressing you know i just i liked it because it was different it was yeah. there was a lot of rain uh i got soaked um and i actually i went to my college football homecoming right, game right. Mm. in the college rain. reunion right a college. yes yes and i was wearing you know they gave you those those yeah. ponchos uh -huh. made yeah. out of trash bags yeah. but not as thick and um, <laughs> so I had one of those on, you know. It didn't do much. It didn't do much. Yeah. No, it didn't do much. But fortunately, I'm of age, and I could have a magic thermos. So that was wonderful. Oh, yeah. times they have a change. Yes, yeah. exactly. Who'd they play? Was that Iowa? Y yes, it was yeah. Iowa. Yeah. There were a lot of happy Iowans yeah. there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring that up. Yeah, I I just fucking loved it. I think it. I just, the perpetual, first of all, I mean, being in Chicago Heights, which is just so you people out there understand, it's not the city of Chicago. It's like you wouldn't even know being in Chicago Heights that you were in the city of Chicago. It's it's. it's is just, that like two hundred and fiftieth South or something like, like that? Like like Halstead and and uh, and Coolidge. Yeah, it's I mean, down it's, there. Yeah, yeah. It's about forty forty five minutes south. So it's. But is a, it like a? I mean, is there like a number? Is like a hundred. 50th south or yeah 150th is around there yeah I mean, okay it's uh it just it 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 was so quiet and the, i'm there's incessant construction noise out here Ugh. and it's it we need rain here so bad yeah and it, you know nobody complains about the la weather yeah. but something about going back to chicago i mean it wasn't really cold in chicago it no, was it was, it was, it was sort of brisk and nice and you know, and I wasn't doing a whole lot. I didn't get wet like you guys did, you know. But uh, it was just, it was nice. It was my dad's 75th birthday. Oh, yeah. happy birthday, cool. dad. And, uh, awesome. You know, it was Was he beautiful. happy? Was he? He was fucking, the, every, well, my family's neurotic, you know. So we're Italians and Jews. So my mm. father, you know, Jesus. my father's family are all Italian. So none of them are neurotic at all. You know, Italians <laughs> Italians from Chicago are like black people. You know, they're like they're cool and they roll with it. Yeah. But Jews, I mean, it was like it was like 
three Larry Davids in a van together. Just, <laughs> oh, man. just even when the people are agreeing with each other, they're disagreeing, that kind of a thing. Yeah. And my mother and sister are both agreeing and disagreeing with each other at the same. I mean, it's lunacy. I don't have a tolerance for it. It's like this. My 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 mother and my sister could have gone down and and, and got Noriega out of the bunker. They could have just gone down. Remember, they got Noriega yep. to play the rock and roll music. That could have been my mother and my sister just with megaphones. And All right, send them down. We've got a, we've got a location. Yeah. Send them down. So it was a little crazy, but in between the craziness, there was a lot of... A lot of joy and happiness, and yeah. it was beautiful. My whole family was there. Like, we were all together. And Was it a surprise? Did he it, know? It wasn't How a surprise. We all met in Tell Chicago, yeah. but the party was a surprise. So, so we oh, were all good. together, and then we kind of submarined him. Into, we said, well, we're going to Aurelio's for dinner yeah. to meet my uncle. Nice. And man. everybody was there. So it was pretty cool. I haven't know? had a family gathering in so long because my family did. We have a big family and we all like fight as in we re refuse to talk to each other. My sister didn't even go to my brother's funeral. That's how bad it is. Oh. Yeah. Not to bring it down. No, no. This, I, this I, makes I, me feel better about my I choke, family. Dude, I choke about the this shit right now on stage, man. I'm talking about everything. I've, I just don't you care You have anymore. to. Yeah, I don't even care. So when I hear that, I'm like, I remember those days. And I was like, those were the good days. Yeah, ten years ago, when my family got along and I drank back then, and I was just like, oh yeah, let's just get bombed off a of Jaeger all night. Now, no, <laughs> it's 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 who's going to be there and when are they leaving? That's wow. one of those text messages. Wow. And well, thank you for making me appreciate my yeah, uh, you, my yeah. my sort of curb your enthusiasm <laughs> kind of. How about you, Hef? Yeah. Oh yeah, my family's good. It's I mean, I'm, my brother and sister we get along really well. Um, I'm the only one with kids, so my kids have a great aunt and uncle. My parents are both gone, so there's not that. I have some cousins and so everybody kind of gets along, you know. My brother's ten years my senior. My sister's six years, and we we get along really well. I mean, we're all all three of us are quite different. Um, but we let each other be right. who they want to be. Wow, and that's great, man. Yeah, it really it is. is. I remember those days. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe in ten years I'll be that. I'll be a, yeah. I remember, I remember when, I believed when in we Santa. used I to get along before yeah. you know I had to wear Kevlar to a family <laughs> reunion. That's actually my nickname is Kevlar. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. I, I took a I took a knife. To That's the right. Neck. You took yeah. a knife to the neck. Yeah, it'll be two years uh, and survived. February. Yeah. Who right took here. a knife to your neck? Oh um, wow! They think it was a vato. That's the story. You never saw. No, oh, God, no. Was that is I right was, near the carotid. It was a quarter inch from the carotid artery. Correct. In, in San Diego, right? In San Diego, how? yeah. To this day, it's it's everyone's got their own story. Got you sober though too. <laughs> were you yeah. walking? Were you walking down the street? And I was. Somebody said, I was a little fucked up. I'd been drinking and doing some other stuff, and I was standing out, uh, outside waiting for my buddy, and I got stuck from behind. Somebody stabbed me, and they then they just took off running. You mean now, they just stabbed you? They didn't say, "Hey, hey, give me that money," or no, they just stabbed me. So it was a couple different. Uh, theories from uh, what the nurses had told me the next day after I went to the hospital. Could have been a hazing, an, an initiation. That was the first thing they said. They said they've gotten uh, multiple reports of people that have been randomly attacked by what they think is a gang initiation, which is you know oh, stab someone or stab a white man. boy, which is a prison thing. The thing is, if you're supposed to kill me, I don't think whoever it was that stabbed me got into the gang because I'm still alive telling this story. So Did somebody find you, you or were you with friends? Or? I was with my buddy, but he was inside. He's inside of uh, like a Denny's. I think it was a Denny's, like going to the bathroom or something. I was outside of his truck. He's got a nice truck. So I thought that's what I thought it was at first was oh. we're getting carjacked. And then he didn't got a girl, whoever it was, guy or girl. That's what I'd say to everybody because, you know, anybody can be stabbed nowadays or can stab right. men and women can right. do that. So I'm not biased in either. So someone found you. <laughs> your blood is shooting out of your neck. Uh, it wasn't shooting, but oh. it, about two minutes later, I, I ran across the street and uh, – my friend, he runs a restaurant right across the street, and he said, oh, you're, you're, you're cut. it looks like you cut yourself shaving. I went in the bathroom. I'm like, uh-oh. So I actually got some soap and water to clean it up. And then all of a sudden, just went, and it just started gushing out. Just I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so Wow. So it had coagulated just for a minute. Yeah, it had coagulated. Long from, enough for you to, yeah. I mean, that's got to have some meaning. That yeah. Long enough for you to get somewhere where. To get somewhere to see it. I look in the mirror, and I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. And then I dial my friend who's across the street and know where I went. And he came 
running over and he's like, oh, he's screaming and there's blood everywhere. I've got tissues and towels from the bathroom. And I'm like, I'm in trouble. He takes his shirt off. He's actually from the south side, too. Takes his shirt off his back. Big guy puts it around my neck, tightens it up. And then we fly to the he drives me to the uh, to the hospital and we come storming in the hospital. Just soaked. I'm soaked in blood. It's just it's all over. I ended up losing two pints of blood. Had emergency surgery, had a blood transfusion. They thought that they, uh, whoever hit me or cut me, thought that they hit the artery, which is why it was like, you know, chaotic. I went into this ER room and it was just like the TV show. I'm looking around like there's 20 people trying to save my life. I'm half in the bag making jokes. And I'm sitting there and they're trying to save my life. And they're like, we think they hit the artery. This is really bad, blah, blah, blah. And then I kind of like came to and I'm like, wait a second. This is, this is fucked up. And I was like, I, I quit joking around because I was cracking jokes the whole time. But that was better. You were better off with the crack. You didn't yeah. know when not knowing was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Not, because a lot of people panic. I've been in some weird situations where I don't panic, but this was way different. This was, you know, literally life threatening. So. And you would have had a witty last line, you know, last word to go, wow, you know, the last thing Trevor said, you know, so you probably if yeah. you tried a few. You probably had a good one. Yeah. 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 He does hit ones. a couple good ones, you know. Every once in a while, yeah. I, I make a lot. Every once in a while. Every once in a while, He's, I got a bet, punchline. You bet 300. Uh, that's great. <laughs> 300. I'm, I'm excited with 300. That is the nicest thing everyone has ever said to me about my comedy. <laughs> well, I may be overestimating that Dude, for the I'll purposes of... Uh, Even of 280, the, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. we're going down. Get Trevor in here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pinch hitter. Yeah. When I was in high school, I did stand up. I was doing stand up comedy then, but it wasn't there weren't there weren't any proper clubs really. And um, I was in high school, and I had a partner, and we had gone out and done a gig. And what we do is we'd go into a um, like a disco at the time, and my friend, who was very convincing, would talk them would into. convince him, them to let us. You know, to get a, we'd get a free Coke or a dollar or something to let us do stand up. <laughs> and everyone loves Stop Doing the Hustle to let <laughs> us come up and do something funny. So we were leaving there. We went out and got some food. And we were, I was dropping my friend off at his apartment building, not a too savory of, of a neighborhood. And um, he gets out. I'm in my sister's Ford Maverick. And he gets out ahead of me and he's walking. It's like three o'clock in the morning. And suddenly he's walking with these three guys. And I'm like, wow, he knows everyone. You know, he's amazing. And so we, he, he, uh, suddenly I walk up and go, hey, guys. And they're like, come with us. And they have like a shotgun and a pistol. And they took our food and our money. And then they, there was an abandoned building next door. And they told us to go down this dark gangway. And we thought they were just going to put us in there and start shooting. And so my friend and I looked at each other and said, take it easy, man. Yeah, you too. We said goodbye because we thought that was it. But we got to the end of the gangway and there was an open gate and you could see on the street. And I heard one of the guys go, oh man, this isn't going to work. And so I realized they just didn't want us to see the car. So I said, hey, it was middle of winter. I said, you know what? Just take us out back, okay? We will lay face down in the snow for like 20 minutes. Don't even worry about it. We got you. And like, yeah, that's a good idea. So we went out back and we laid face down in the snow and we heard them go around to the car and drive off. I mean... You know, and this was the geez. beginning of your criminal career. <clears throat> yeah, that yeah. was the beginning. <laughs> Planning, helping wow. criminals plan. That's when it better. all turned. <laughs> you know, that could be a good comedy sketch or TED Talk. Helping yeah. criminals plan better. If you're yeah. a hostage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, you can see the car. This isn't going to work, guys. You have, you have hostage wisdom. <laughs> I mean, an improvisational hostage wisdom. Yes. I mean, you thought on your feet. That was probably the greatest comedy riff you'll ever have probably like, that was yeah. it i peaked early you did <laughs> that was but you had a blessing of a career after that so uh, you must have you must have gleaned some so there's some runaway train kind of uh sort yes. of a runaway train sort yeah. of yes i wanted them to run away is all i wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and they did yeah they did they wow did. hefner man yeah. kyle t by the way kyle t would be a great that would be your name if you were an r&b singer Kyle T. Oh, Kyle or a T. wrestler. A wrestler, yes. Or a wrestling R&B singer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there we go. I want to hold you. I want to <laughs> pin you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to push your face in the mat. <laughs> Robin Thicke, look out. 
It's, it's very R. Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the timing of yeah, Trevor Kevillo. So because uh-huh. 10, 15 years ago, it wouldn't have had the same, no, yeah. the Kelly, same yeah. sick uh, connotation. I see you noticed the cups. And he's from Chicago. Yeah. Is he really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A lot of great, we have a great, you know, amazing people come from where we're from, man. Yeah. Robin Harris <clears throat> is from Chicago. Oh, Was wow. from Chicago. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Pryor was from Peoria. Yeah. Yes. Bill yeah. Murray and Will uh, Matt, yeah. On and on and Belushi, on. Belushi. Belushi. Yeah. Uh, is that Lombard? Glenn Allen. Really? Is, yeah. He went to uh, he's, College uh, of DuPage. He's uh, Armenian or what is he exactly? Uh, Al- Albanian. Albanian. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. He's Albanian. Yeah. A lot of wow. amazing, amazing talent. Yeah, from where we're well, from. Well, when it's thirty degrees below zero, there's not a lot to do. So. Yeah, that yeah. And drink. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I noticed the. Gosh, this is such a fucked up thing to say, but I gotta say it. The people are more real. They're more like real people, and I and they're also more pissed off, which I kind of like. Like, there's the the guys all have a chip on their shoulder because the weather. Yeah, it's yeah. all about the weather. Yeah, by the way, it really is. You know, that's why I think people are so aloof out here. Yeah. Because the weather's so good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They've never experienced life. Yeah, someone in Chicago, <laughs> a stranger, how you doing? They're like, what? <laughs> what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> they, like, think, you know, that you're asking some uh, odd question. Hey, how you doing? You, well, they're suspicious of that. They're, they are. They're totally suspicious yeah. of... Yeah. And I like that. I really like that. I miss that. I miss the realness of that. <clears throat> I, I hate to say that that's... Maybe it's just a change. It's possible it's just a change from yeah. here. But the guys out here are so, f- and the and the women are friendly there compared to here. No, you don't think? Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Different kind of friendly. How so? Not like. What do you mean, what Trevor? Do you, what do you do? Friendly. More like, hey, how are you? Right. Out here, it's kind of like, oh, what do you do? And it's like, uh, why? What does that mean? The loaded question. Right. The other thing is the work ethic is incredible in Chicago. Mm. I was When I was there, I was at the, a bar I used to work at, and I was watching uh, two women run the entire bar, bartend and serve and wow. manage the entire place. They washed their own dishes, got their own ice, did everything. And I'm like, this is this is how it's done. They were just, they didn't say a word. They were hustling, they were moving. They had that place on lockdown. And wow. I was like, and both of them are like 30, 38 to 48. So it was just, it was a nice, uh, it was very relieving to see that, you know, like, okay, people still do really work, you know, because out here it's different. You know, I, I, I've i been screaming in, into the right. abyss of Twitter all the time about how nobody wants to work a five-hour shift anymore. What, what you also don't know out there, Twitter land and pep talks crowd, is that Trevor runs the Sycamore Tavern, which is the wow. bar in which the comedy dojo Operates so yeah. Trevor has a firsthand, if if you may, if I may, has a firsthand experience. <laughs> yeah. People's work ethic in it's, Hollywood as opposed to Chicago. I'm, I love. Oh, my, that's so you hire and fire, and you have yeah, to manage the. Not it as, is different, isn't it, Trevor? It's, if it's way different out here. It's, it's a whole different process. Um, the people that work, I don't say with well with me, not for me, but people that work with me, my staff. Um, they're good. They're strong. It's it's a small staff, so they have to work twice as hard. But so much is different in California as far as employment goes versus Illinois. I mean, first of all, bartenders and servers in some parts of Illinois get five an hour. Out here, they're about to get fifteen an hour. They're going to get three times what someone gets in Illinois to do technically the same job. The other thing is that you know a lot of shifts out here are shorter because if you you have to you have you you have to take a man, state mandated 30 minute like break after 6 hours or the company gets like dinged it's called a meal penalty violation so a lot of sh- a lot of businesses will keep people within 6 hours so they don't have to break them and then put them back on so that's why i i like i said i yell into the abyss of twitter of no one knows how to work out here no you know the the work ethic sucks it's but like that's you can't even do a 5 hour shift five, what's wrong they with make you? 5 bucks an hour they make some place i think it's 5 or 6 that's but terrible th- that's though. that's outside cook county cook county i think it's it's like 7 bucks for everybody Still. and cook county is disgusting as far as how expensive it is so you have people that are they got to work three jobs and they're not getting a paycheck Right. My brother worked for uh, Buffalo Wild Wings years ago, and he had insurance and all this other crap. He would get a paycheck, and he would show me zero. 
not one because all wow. of his money his taxes and everything you would get a paycheck do you get zero tips dollars. at buffalo wild oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay okay but it was just bizarre to see that like that's you're, he's literally working for tips right like now are the people so. the guys here they'll get 15 an hour will they be able to keep all their tips too yes yeah oh, well, that's but what a lot of lucrative a lot of but a lot of businesses are starting to do is doing kind of more of a serve yourself almost like a european way i think is what it is right more bistro cafe where you don't really have a server. You just kind of have people that kind of like grab things for you and you kind of do the rest because eventually, eventually, you know, bar restaurants, they're going to, right. They want to get away from the overhead. They yeah, want to get less overhead. Exactly. And then they're making you do more. So now you're getting your 15 an hour next year, but you're going to do three jobs instead of one or two. When I moved here five years ago, it was nine fifty an hour. Now it's, it's going to be 15 you know, coming up. So that's a huge change. And I understand it's expensive. It's expensive out here, but they know, could just, use a little bit of that where we're from. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, know. There, you know, there's, there's counties and states that pay their servers and bartenders two nineteen an hour. I, I remember that. I, I think, remember being in college in Florida. No, my, still to this my day. My roommates to this day. Were, were working in a bar and they were working at a bar. I forget it was, it was called ale house or some shit like that. And they were making two dollars an hour to yeah. be, to wait, and then and you know they were all their money was tips. Yeah. So the 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 hourly was nothing. Yeah. But you know if you're twenty twenty one, it's different. But anyway, wow. yeah. well guys, on that, well, that extremely exciting note, we're going to. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking that, about a career you. change. Wow. An hour. I mean, this has been Jeez. really an hour to sweep up. Poop. Fifteen this an hour great. to. If you knew what we get an hour to do this podcast, yeah. you might be uh, I'm in the hole, actually. rethinking your... <laughs> so we're going to read an email we got. Just we're, We got a... Uh, by the way, okay, so let me read this email. Hey, Eddie and Steve. It's a bummer nobody called or emailed pep talks last week, and I'm sure this week will be different. It already is. <laughs> <laughs> Fans like me, I think, are a little bummed out about the coming end of civilization. We're horrified by human behavior. We feel out of compete, uh, out competed. This is a really profound way of putting this, by the way. We feel out competed by sociopaths who are rewarded for loving money more than we do. We feel oppressed from the outside world and depressed within our own minds. So we can be too distracted to remember to call and email you. But rest assured, people like me need people like you to keep doing what you do. I need pep talks and a couple other podcasts football games, and other forms of entertainment to distract me. I should probably wrap up and say something funny. Uh, Scott Covert. Scott, I want to thank you for your email. And the reason I read your email is because we got a bunch of emails and calls, but I wanted to save them, except for yours. I wanted to save them for when Eddie's here so Eddie can comment on them and give you guys some feedback because it's not really fair for you to send all your stuff and me to read it when Eddie's not here. So I'm only reading this. And by the way, we all need amusement. To I mean, wouldn't you guys say we all need a distraction? For me, it's sports, baseball and football, pornography, uh, occasional pornography, uh, Instagram, really, yeah. Instagram and Facebook, occasionally a Facebook argument. Well, I n yeah. I've noticed that you're oh with me. Yeah. Do well, you, you, do you try to say incendiary things. You say things, you know, um, and people get excited. I love the way you put that. <laughs> <laughs> you're exciting those people, Stephen, and I've seen it. I was like, wow, he just said that, and let's watch and see. So oh, you'll yeah. say something really outrageous, not from your point of view, but maybe right. from the point of view of others. I'll go get a sandwich and a cup of coffee and just wait. Wow. Because cause it's going to be fun. I'm so, you validated me today. Yes. That you've said that. No, it's fun. Um, and it's you fun have a couple of friends that do that. I'm not the only one. You have probably a couple a well, couple. Rick, Rick Overton. Oh, he's, he's, he's oh man, he loves yeah. to provoke. That's the guy I that it. I look at and think, I'm so glad this guy is out there shouldering the burden of what I, I love can't it. do. Yeah, because yeah. I can't, I don't have the energy to do that. No, the way he does it. What about Bricado? He's another one who. He's, yes, Bricado. He's, Brandon Bricado. He's a pretty. Him. He's a pretty uh, he's incendiary. Crazy. He's yes, he does he like likes, to provoke. He yeah. does. He's He'll great. say some. He'll go to crazy town. But see, it's I, not really that outrageous. I mean, what you guys say, it's, but it's it's more real. I yeah. think I you okay. Know. So give me a garden variety thing that I've said because I'm interested now to see because I try to restrain myself. 
You, what you don't know, maybe, is that I'm trying. Well, it to appears res- you've struggled out of the out of the straitjacket, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> uh oh, Ollie's loose. <laughs> <laughs> the lunatic is on the wall. Ollie's loose. The lunatic is in the hall. Sign Double lock Facebook. the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Take. Oh my gosh! So, wh- do you remember specifically any? I'm trying to say it's it's usually. Uh, political. political. Okay. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you will, oh God, what was it? You said something. It's like, you know, everybody either goes, you know, Republican or Democrat. And then you say, yeah, they're both foolish shit. Oh, right. That's you know, right. And you'll say that. And then you'll say what you don't realize is, and you'll have facts to back up your argument. It's, you know, you're not talking out of, you know, something, an orifice. I mean, you're, you're actually saying something that has, but you know it's going to upset people. Yes, yeah. I do. Yes, I do. Good. Because we Gosh, all like our, you, our comfortable yeah. little um, niches that we've yep. decided we're in. Yeah. And so we stay in our little niche and think that's, you know, makes us happy. And you you like pushing that uh, table out from underneath us and letting us hang on the rope. Wow, man. I mean, can I, can I get that on a quote Jeez. from you? Yeah. Can we, we run that back? That. that is a beautifully put... Can we record Cri- that? Like critique of yeah. my of my uh, yeah. wanting to disrupt things. Yes, you uh, are a disruptor. I'm a disruptor. But that's how you learn is that kind of that what you're doing is that's, you know, it, it, the problem is it's people. Some people are just going to ignore it or un- unfollow, unfriend you where it's like having a discussion about di- with different points of view is where you learn. And that's where we've completely fallen you right. know, because of social media, which is if I don't agree with Lolly, I'm just going to ignore him. That's it. I'm going to cut them off. I'm going to, you know, block them, this and that. And it's like, I'm, I'm safe here now with my thoughts and my feelings. Well, first, well, he and, won't say, you won't, Stephen, you won't say something that's not yeah. unsubstantiated. You will say something and then bolster it and yeah. give it a foundation. It's not like you'll just make a blanket statement. You know what I mean? Right. Which has no basis in reality. All skies are green. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. you. All Republic- and if you agree, yeah. disagree with me, it's, you're yeah. fucked. Yeah. All Republicans are bad. All Democrats are bad. It's like, what? Like, right, you can't say that. That's such a, and and we, you know, there's stuff like that out there. I see it. Oh, you know, the GOP is awful. Oh, the, you know, the DNC is awful. I'm like, everybody that voted for Trump is a Nazi, and I'm just like, what are you talking about? I'm like, there's people who just got just fell into his bullshit, just like any other president. Yeah, some of them are nice people. Yeah, there's a few. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like half, almost half the country. Well, not half the country, but half the voters. You know, or a little less. You know, they're not, they're not all bad people. They just, they got bamboozled. That's it, you know? It happens. Well, uh, first of all, when I, uh, is Eddie trying to call in? Yeah. Oh, oh. sorry, Eddie. That's fucked Uh-oh. up. Oh. Eddie's just, he's probably, right I'm now. sure he's pissed. He's flying in I'm circles. sure he's pissed. But we're holding it down, Eddie. Yeah, people get bamboozled. I mean, I'm. I'm about to get $10 million from Nigeria. So, you know. <laughs> the stripper last night, I'm waiting for her to call me. I gave her a few hundred bucks. I'm oh, still okay, waiting. guys, here we go. <laughs> Eddie. Hey, buddy. Hey, man, we've been having some technical difficulties. Can you hear, uh, can you guys hear Eddie out there? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're coming in really low. I can hear your turn signal. Are you going left or right at yeah. this moment? What do you say? <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> uh, I, it appears we're not having the best connection. Are you swimming, Eddie? Um, you know, I, I tried to call in uh, before, but uh, you know I'm in San Diego, and someone lunged at me with a knife in my carotid artery. Are you? And, uh, are you serious? I am in San Diego, and I, I, I haven't been here. I think I've only been here once before, very briefly. So I heard this call from, I, I was listening to you guys on YouTube, and I heard Trevor saying, oh, yeah, I got the family from San Diego. And I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> Eddie, yeah. here. Eddie Pepitone listens to his own podcast. Thank you, Ambulance, yeah. in the background for okay. that. Yeah, be careful, Eddie, especially yeah. in SeaWorld. Yeah. Don't sit in the splash zone. That's right. Do you see how he picked that up? What a genius comic. Stabbed in San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, I, and I'm trying to calm down. You know I'm a nervous guy, and especially when I go to different environments. Like, I feel that this is a very beautiful place, but I feel the violence underneath it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel there's a violence underneath the facade of civility here. You're picking up... Day. You're picking up on an underbelly, a sort of like uh, blue velvet kind of underbelly there oh. of, of a middle American place. Yeah. Yeah, I think I am. And uh, then I hear Trevor's story. And, you know, I, I, I you know, that, then when Trevor said, oh, I was doing, you know, I was drinking, I was wasted. Then I said, oh, okay. yeah. he probably fucked something over. <laughs> he was probably... He was probably so fucked up that he, you know, fucked someone over. So then I relaxed again, you know. <laughs> started, I don't fuck people over. Saying that no, 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 it's a gang ritual and it's random, and then I got pets again. Yeah. <laughs> and right now, I am just trying to, uh, you know, relax again. I'm outside. I'm headlining this place for the risk of stuff. Cafe, and if you're thinking like we're a shot to the moon, you're right. This is um, this is how I know I it's bad because something something came something uh, some background noise totally blotted out the name of that place where you're headlining. Can you say it again? The whistle stop. The whistle stop, people. If you're in San Diego, get your ass to the whistle stop tonight. Is it just tonight or when? Yeah, yeah, just tonight, just tonight, I'm at Fern, it's on Fern Street, the Whistle Stop uh, Cafe or Bar, whatever it is, it's closed right now, so I'm across the street at a place, a coffee shop, and I'm, you know, listening to you, okay, it's a very good conversation, uh, you know, you guys are just kind of very mellow, and... Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not interested, but I'm sure some people <laughs> are. We're just filling the sound with silence in your absence. Yeah. <laughs> we're, trying. Silence. We're, we're trying. Um, but anyway, uh, tell tell the people at ATC that I tried to call in and it said unable to complete the call. So, you know, it's just kind of uh, an affront to me and an insult that this is a prearranged call-in. It's a prearranged call-in and I fucking can't get through. And it's, it's a personally, I don't feel good about it, you know? On your own podcast, Eddie. This is your podcast. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a really good job. It makes me feel confident that I can travel now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you, can, you, you have a very mellow vibe, and I, I, I think you would get very good at this if I kept traveling. <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying is you're planning to never come back. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, you know. If, if there's an initiation thing with a gang, who knows, you know? Yeah. Um... You could you could do like an you could do like an about Schmidt, you could do like an about Schmidt thing and just take off, and go. Did he do that? Did yeah. Schmidt do that? Yeah, Jack Nicholson and about Schmidt. He got a trailer and just he decided never to come back. I've done that. Right, but I only have about I would say six to seven hundred dollars to my name. <laughs> so that, that wouldn't be a long trip for me. It would. It would. Not if you lined up comedy gigs along the way, Eddie. I mean, you are... you. I'm beloved. I'm a national treasure. You are, and there are about, like, what, 150,000 people who would pay to see you across this across this globe, right? Say yeah. that. I'm, I'm just guesstimating there are probably about 150,000 people across the globe who would pay to see you, who know you, and... Yeah, you think, boy, that's an interesting number. Yeah, yeah. I just pulled it out of my ass. Ten bucks a head. <laughs> that's good money, man. Ten bucks it is. a head. Half the door, Eddie. Half yeah. the door. Fifty-fifty, Eddie. You know me. Um, So what else? What else is going on? Guys? Well, Trevor, we were talking about how the city's burning down. One of the uh, favorite subjects that you would be talking about if you were here now. Trevor's right by the fires. He hasn't been evacuated yet. Yeah. Kyle and I are safe. Trevor, how evacuated? 
evacuate yesterday? No, he hasn't been evacuated, but he's very close to being evacuated. He's got his go bag by the by the front door. I do. I actually, I'm not going to lie, I put all my valuables, my jewelry, and my cash in a safe outside of my home. Where exactly? I can't hear them. I can't exactly. hear you, Steve. <laughs> uh, Trevor said he put, say it again, Trevor. I put all my, Eddie, I put all my uh, my jewelry, He took cash. all his valuables. Yeah, my valuables, and, and, and he, I put them in a he safe. He put them in a safe outside of his house. Just to be safe. He, he buried all his valuables yeah. outside of the house underneath the earth, just in case. Did he really? Yes, I, I he did. did. Really? Yeah, yeah, they're actually in a safe right now. Yeah. Oh man, I'll tell you, these are uh, these are uh, not good times. I was listening to a guy who was talking. His name is Chet. Look up this guy, Steve, and tell people about it on the podcast. Dale Wiggington. Al Wiggington. I think Al, it's Dale. Al Wiggington. Dale or Dane. I think it's Dale. But anyway, <laughs> Dale Wiggington. We got three. We got yeah. three names. Yeah, man. He was talking about climate collapse in a very scientific way and look up geoengineering yep. or climate engineering that he's talking about. It slipped me out. It slipped me out. Okay. How can um, how conspiratorial I mean if you're talking about it it's probably not conspiratorial, but would Sam Tripoli <laughs> would Sam how would Sam Tripoli weigh in on this? That's our barometer is Sam. No, I'm asking how how would Sam would would Sam Tripoli weigh in on this as a real? I hear you guys. Oh, this is we have a fucked connection, Eddie. Well, all right, guys, just look up uh, cl- uh, climate engineering. I don't think it's conspiracy. I think it's fact. Okay, yeah. geoengineering, and when you're back, we'll talk about that more. Right. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys. Love you, Eddie. We miss you here. Bye. Miss you, Eddie. Bye, see you, Eddie. See you soon. Don't get stabbed. That was a terrible connection. But I was going to give him some really good advice. He can't hear you. I know. He couldn't hear either one of should you. I, uh, should I tweet he can it? Only hear I'll tweet me. it at him. Yeah, tweet it at him. I'm going to send him a, I'm going to tell it to everybody in the audience. I'm going to send him a tweet later. When you go to San Diego, do not buy cocaine from Carlos, <laughs> the busboy. <laughs> That was At the Denny's, probably okay? Probably the reason. And this is a perfect time <laughs> for an ad. Wouldn't you say that we should do a little advertising right about now? It's terrible. PG&E announcement mm. from one of our great sponsors, PG&E. We all know them in California. You know them. I know them. They know them. Emma knows them. PG&E, California's wildfire season, is out of control. You can blame high winds. You can blame climate breakdown. You can blame super bloom. And, well, maybe even PG&E. But before you start pointing fingers at a mob-run power company with a nonsensical statewide contract, PG&E would like you to take a journey to nine months from now. That's right, PG&E is bringing joy into this world with panic babies. PG&E's panic babies are caused by a mix of citywide blackouts, ravenous wildfires, and a need to feel alive under the pressure of complete and inevitable disaster. Next time you find yourself trapped in a storm drain having unprotected going out swinging sex with a stranger while your lungs fill with hot ash, take a moment to thank PG&E for making this moment possible. If you find yourself locked in a flaming ambulance and have final moment sex with an invalid on top of a pile of smoldering raccoons, remember PG&E helped initiate that. Whenever you find yourself humping as the fires close in, spending the final moments, spending the final moments feeling alive. Remember, if you survive, that bundle of joy you made is a PG&E baby, and you should associate PG&E with the joy of that new child, and not for the blackouts, fires, and smoke that almost ended your life. PG&E, our fires helped make that baby. PG&E's panic babies are going to be, uh, well. You'll know soon, nine months from now. Huh. I'll you, name PG&E. my kid Crispy. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Crispy Hefner. Yeah, Crispy yeah. Hefner. Yeah. Crispy, wow. come in here. Yeah. That was, that was pretty good, whoever wrote that. That's our producer, Matt Rossimoto. That's oh, his, uh, that was written. That's a real fake ad written by Matt Rossimoto. Love it, Matt. And uh, Well done, Matt. How we doing, Emma? We're close, aren't we? Oh. Okay. 
Uh, I've I've received 17 texts from our producer Matt Rossimoto who wrote that ad, yeah. directing Eddie Pepitone to try to call in. And that's the kind of commitment we have here. We're we're desperate to be heard. <laughs> we're desperate. We're desperate to be heard. We're desperate to entertain. We're desperate to be entertained. Which is why people listen to fucking podcasts. Would you? Because they're desperate to be entertained. What is what is that all about anyway? That. People are, I mean, you're an OG. Yeah, we don't, yeah. we don't go outside. I mean, you're not talking to people in the, so you listen to people This is talk, our connection. And then you yeah. feel a connection. Yeah. If you, if you hear people talking quietly into a microphone, it's as if they're right there speaking to you in your ear. That's very pervert slash serial killer. But it's killer. really just it is. <laughs> It's wonderful. The great Keep going. comic actor. It's very soothing. <laughs> oh, you weren't done yet? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm actually starting to undress myself. He's, I could see Trevor's <laughs> eyes are sort of closing. Oh, man, and, this is good. Yeah, he's shaking. Uh, oh is there fentanyl God. in your voice? <laughs> you are the fentanyl of Chicago comedy. Yes. Oh, my God. Kyle Hefner. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and that's my, I get, you can quote me, and I will quote you on mm. my, however beautifully you put my uh, mm. my substantiated rage. Yes. On, on social media. Yeah. And and by the way, I we have connect, like, because we're comedians and entertainers. We really have, I have tremendous friendships with people. I, I, I take for granted, I think, that I don't need, pod, I don't listen to podcasts. I don't either. I it's don't. Tough. I, I, to me, it's like, yeah. you, no offense, no offense to you people, you people. Uh, who enjoy listening to us. I don't take any pleasure in, like, I don't go look. I would never be on a podcast if a person I admired hadn't asked me to be on a podcast. Mm. So for me, it's like, I don't understand. I don't relate. I, to, I've become uh, addicted to podcasts. and um, But it, oddly enough, they're not actually comedy podcast oh the, the I, murder Are i listen to the to murder true crime you podcast fucking to go to sleep great. there's you something that i find to very go to sleep uh, but yeah to go to sleep. <laughs> i'm trying to go to stab, sleep stab, at stab, night stab, and when the guy says <laughs> the decapitated head was found in the culvert uh, the forensics team came and we didn't discover anything. The rest of the body was strewn across the freeway. I mean, I, I get groggy. I that makes me groggy. Really going on. I yeah. know what's really, what's really going on is you could be that voice cast on that. That's what it podcast. is. Yeah. yeah. Like, so start, you're really, someone's mean? getting your work, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you have a, an incredible line of credits. You should be getting that murder, I should be. murder voice. Yeah. Every now and then, though, there is a true crime podcast that I can't, and I have a strong stomach that I can't even listen to. Do you really listen? Have, are you are you kidding, or do you really I, listen I, to these? I'm. It is a. I guess this is a public uh, confession. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do listen to. Like I've heard all of Forensic Files probably three or four times. Sometimes I'm like, no, did he really do it? Was it the husband? Was it the wife? You know it. But it's. But, so this is like. Uh, what this has replaced the Agatha Christie kind of thing like for you it's you're 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 trying to figure it out you want to know yes right. and some of them the way the way they set them up is so fun because before they actually start hearing the crime they'll say what you are about to hear may cause nausea and extreme mental imbalance if you feel that you are not able to listen to this Please consult a mental health professional. Again, this is gonna. This is your job for the taking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you really this need to push. Great, yeah. yeah, but once I hear that, I just start getting. Groggy. You get excited. Yeah, it's your yeah I get yeah. groggy. I start drifting <laughs> off. Yeah, there's something so relaxing. You know, Jay about. Leno had that same effect on the late night show crowd, <laughs> yeah, which did. is why the economy boomed in the '90s. Yeah, he did because Carson kept funny. people up. Oh, that's right. They couldn't put in a full work There were day. probably some Jay Leno panic babies, uh, probably. <laughs> he probably. <laughs> <laughs> With the oh extended my gosh, chin. Dude, I just got a picture of the fucking boys from Brazil as Jay Leno. <laughs> like, they, remember they clone, they clone yeah. Jay Leno and he comes back like 70 Jay, Jay Lenos. Oh, wow. Just coming back like. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, they would own every car in the United States. That's right. Uh, if you had 70 of them. They'd each have 300 vehicles. Uh, oh, by the way, question yes, for you. Uh, Emma, how are we doing on time? Uh, 59 minutes. 59 minutes. Okay. Oh well, we got to wrap this up. Okay. We'll, I'll ask you off screen. Uh, Kyle Hefner, by the way, we have some stuff to plug. We're going to go through that. Uh, is in a play right now. Do you want to? Do you want to? Yes, it's called Mistakes Were Made. We're we're closed now, but we'll reopen in January at the Santa Monica Playhouse. 
uh, written by a guy named Jerry Mayer that who produced and directed my first sitcom job in LA, which was Facts of Life. And uh, Jerry's still out there writing. And, I forgot uh, to list that off. Do, doing along. his play, yeah. Cool, very cool. And Trevor, do you have anything to plug? Yes, yes. Dojo of Comedy located at Sycamore Tavern in Hollywood, 7038 West Sunset Boulevard at the southeast corner of Sunset and La Brea. We run shows there about five to six nights a week. Uh, the restaurant is open seven days a week. Uh, visit, us, visit us at sycamoretavern.com. And for comedy stuff, Visit us on social media at the Dojo of Comedy, or you can go to our website, which is constantly getting updated. Uh, <laughs> it's a great room. Long story. It's a great room. Yeah, that's and right. the food is room. delicious. Yeah, that's yeah, it's room. restaurant yeah. quality food in a in a tavern. So. There's an upstairs and a downstairs. Yeah, there's a, that there's, run shows all week. Yeah, I've actually got in the main floor of Sycamore Tavern. There is an open mic room and a small showroom. Upstairs is uh, which we call the Dojo Annex, and upstairs in the main room, as you call it, showroom is uh, the Dojo of Comedy where we have book shows. Um, and we have, like, Jimmy Dore has is, is been Dude, selling out every it, show. And so we have everything have some from... some great comedians. Yeah, there. we have any, everything from starter shows all the way to some of the top comics in, in the country. So we're... I, perform at the, I performed, yeah, featured for Eddie Pepitone at the Comedy yep. Dojo. Yeah. And uh, and I will say this as a, as a... Since we're all sort of plugging that beautiful thing for me, I will give you this. This is real badass fucking comedy this is no like alternative comedy hand-wringing bedwetters and nail biters these yeah. are like people who had to fight their way out of somewhere and you will you will get people who are you will see a violent experiment if that's what you're into yeah visit trevor at the comedy dojo and uh and i is that is that it because i'm gonna no. plug something that's what it. are you up to I, Steven? Okay. i'm also a comedian <laughs> yes trevor is also a comedian and he he's the co-founder of dojo with sam tripoli our buddy yeah who that ties me into the next thing Sam's on november 8th next <laughs> next week on november 8th friday my show with eddie pepitone will be coming out called comedians without cars getting soda all across streaming across social media on all yes. things comedy network and if you look really close, you will see the great Kyle T. Hefner making a cameo appearance on that oh. show. Oh. We got the OG in our show. I thought you were going to cut me out. Uh, Another credit. It's Jeez. a big surprise for today, along uh, with the Chicago God, thing. God, I'm getting teary -eyed. You're, you're going to be uh, Get me a on Kleenex. that. Uh, so on that note, well, that was a lot. Uh, I need to move this over here because I got to look at you, you fucking people. Oh, that's okay. Well, that was a lot of show, people. A lot of show. Normally, you'd have to pay for a show like this, but each week, we just give it to you for free like a, a happily lactating stripper. There's no effort required on, on your part because we leak out frothy comedy goodness wherever we go. We couldn't stop if we wanted to, and all you need to do is get your face close enough to taste it. If you like the show, why not? tuck a review into our iTunes-themed G-string, slap our ass with a like, motorboat a comment on our <laughs> into our sopping meat pillows, or visit our website and donate a lap dance, because while Eddie's away, I'll be spending that money on a literal lap dance. Our engineers are Emma Erdbrink and Aaron Brungart. Our producer is Matt Rossimoto. Leave us a message, 424-262-0904. Send us an email. Fan mail at peptalkspodcast.com. Hit the donate button. That's how we get paid. Peptalkspodcast.com. For Eddie Pepitone on the road, I'm Stephen Lolly, Trevor Kevelo, and Kyle T. Hefner saying we'll see you next week.